The forestry business has been crucial since time began to how we live our lives. And at the same time, it's perceived as a symbol of the damage we do to our planet. The Brazilian company Agrosapac Group is in the reforestation business, selling timber and wood products through renewable forests. They advocate for forestry as a sustainable, crucial and planet-friendly sector. I sat down here in Dubai to discuss more with the Agrosapac CEO, Diogo Diaz Greca. So we're here at COP28 Dubai, what are you most excited about in terms of announcements that might be made or have been made over the, the course of the week? Oh, it's really exciting just to be here. We saw there's the first COP that just in the first day, they signed a lot of agreements for the future. So there's a really improve from the other COPs. And I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen with the carbon market in the next year. I heard some announcements that they're saying that's really going to improve and increase the size of it. So for us that works with forests are really interesting to see what's going to happen. And uh, so what are you doing here with your company? Why are you here? Uh, we came to see, to learn and see what we can improve in our way of working. So that's our main goal to be here. Very exciting indeed. I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about your company and what you do. So let's head on over to the studio. Diogo, really wonderful to have you here in the thick of it here at COP28. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Laura, for having me. Now, you are in the reforestation business and you're at the helm of a third generation company as well. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about what you do. It's quite a responsibility. I have to take care of this legacy for my grandfather. He was like a visionary back in the 60s. Actually, my grandfather was a, a doctor, medicine and he started planting some forests back in the 60s with the intention of a retirement set and with time just it just took it over his life he's and his brother so he started planting and planting and planting and uh, when it was time to harvesting there was no one to buy it <laughs> so he had to make a tissue factory and they went like partners up to 2001 both of them their brothers in 2001, they split their partnerships. My grandfather stayed with the forest, and my granduncle stayed with the factory. And like 10 years ago, 2014, me and my cousin, we took over the, the company so to make a new chapter in this long legacy. <laughs> Speaking of new chapters, mm -hmm. you know, we've been chopping down trees for fuel and to build for thousands and thousands of years now. Yes. So how has this sector changed, maybe since you started, seeing what your, your grandfather's done? Yes, actually the, the planted forest is, is happening in the world like many years ago. The Portuguese and the Spanish, maybe one of the ones that started with reforestation, they use this to do the ships to discover Brazil, <laughs> right? So nowadays I think um, planted forest is just the future of sustainability. There is no other way to go. We have so many technologies nowadays that we can use anything that we can like uh, replace any products that oil do or metal or, con or concrete with wood. So we can do like big buildings with wood, we can do houses, we can do anything. And it's the only way of construction that's just carbon free because all the time that the forest is planted, we are taking CO2 from the atmosphere and after that it's the time for constructioning for for doing a building is much faster so it's much less smoke much less carbon on the atmosphere we just assemble it and it's all done so I, I believe a lot in this business it's it's a passion for us for me and my family so we want to in future start construction as well with our own forest, do the CLT and glue lamb. It's a pre-pressed thing and then 
let's see what's going to happen. Very impressive indeed. And as you mentioned, you know, the Brazilian forests are very famous. They're absolutely crucial as well. Yeah. And, you know, there has been a bit of anxiety about Brazilian forests as well. So what is the difference? This is a question for you. What is the difference between reforestation and deforestation? It's the, com it's the complete opposite because deforestation, when you harvest a native forest and you just don't plant in anything anymore, and a reforestation is when you get an open area and you plant a, a new forest so you can use this for other purpose. I normally say that the pine trees and eucalyptus that are really growing, fast growing uh, trees, they are like the soldiers of the nature. They came to sacrifice themselves so the other plants can stay alive because mankind needs our product. Mankind needs wood, needs biomass. We need a, a lot of things with wood products, so that's the way I see it. It's the defenders of the nature. And of course, we're having to reevaluate our attitudes towards resources from fossil fuels uh, to minerals out there as well. So what do you think we, we need to do when it comes to focusing our attention to wood and what does the future sort of hold in that sector? I think we already have all the technologies that we need. We just need to, to focus more and give more attention. For example, here in, in COP, uh, one of the, the less spoken topics that I heard is about planted forests. There's a lot of other topics about reducing emissions and everything, but the forest is the real oxygen producer. It's the only one that takes the CO2 off the air. So I think we should have more attention by that. And I just don't say only for the big guys, for the big companies, but for the small producers, that's are the one that's, that will take care of the native forest. These are the ones that need the incentive to, to preserve. And these are the ones that need the incentive to plant a new forest. So I think the, the whole goal is to, to look to these guys and give more help to them. I think like um, the carbon credit is a, is a really good tool for that, but uh, you have to make it easier for general people because nowadays only the big guys have access to that, it's especially in my country, in Brazil, it's really hard to, to put the project together. So I think that's a challenge that we can have a better look for the future. So you've been at the helm of the company for about 10 years, as we mentioned, you've taken over which direction would you like to see the company go in and what is your priority right now? Yes, I think that's a, a long way right now, 10 years is a long time. But um, our, our biggest challenge is to put more value on what we already have, that is the forest. To have a big forest on time of harvesting like we have now, it's, um, it's really hard to do it nowadays because for the first, it takes a while. You cannot say, oh, come on, tree, let's grow faster. You have to wait. So it's a patient business. And my, my challenge as a CEO of the company is to, to improve the value of what we already have. So we start processing our own forest. We did a sawmill, and now we start with a plywood plant. Next year, we will start with the pellets company. So with this, we will have like a, a co-working of wood industries. All the products that come inside there will become a new product, so all the log, we won't have any waste. With the barks, we will generate energy and heat for the cooling, for the drying of the, the wood. With the main part, we will generate lumber. We already do, in the future, I wanna do the CLT and glue lamp. And with the long, with the wider logs, we do the peeling and do the, the plywood. And with the waste, with the dust, we do the, the pellets. So that's our goal, to work with sustainability business. And our next move after the industries are done is to work with renewable energy. We have some, some projects of hydroelectrics and solar plants back home to the small producers, to the small consumers. So we'll do like small plants of solar to rent to smaller consumers so they can be carbon free as well. So speaking of COP28, what are you most excited about in terms of announcements and what have you been impressed by and what about your sector as well? This is our first COP that we are participating, so it's been quite an experience. Um, I was really thrilled that this, this COP is the first one that in the first day 
we have so many agreements signed and um, I, have so, I saw so many good initiatives from the private sector and the governments around here and I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen with the carbon credit market. I think that's the main tool that we need to, to, to make an incentive for the small producers to have um, tools to, to preserve their own forests, the native forests. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen in the future because um, signing and telling is one thing and making it happen is um, another challenge, a much bigger one. So, but I believe if, if we all, all work together as a whole and, and unity, we can make the, the world much better. We already have all the tools we need. We just need to use them correctly. So that's my point of view. I think we are in the right way. We just need to make it happen. Diego Diaz Greca, really wonderful to speak with you here today. Thank you so much for joining us and, uh, and sharing your journey. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me, Laura. It was a pleasure.